last video here I want to check out is this very interesting video that I need to pull up here if I can get a hold of it that features a few people from the Legion of Skanks or the actual Legion of Skanks crew discussing um, their confusion as to why their fans and fans of the you know of the much heralded and loved Brendan Schaub are not too enamored about the thought of Legion of Skanks inviting said Brendan Schaub to Legion of Skanks and um, I've spoken about it on my live stream I've made my feelings kind of clear on the subject I essentially think um, what's his face um, what's the guy's name again um, Luis J Gomez is essentially clout chasing that's what it feels like to me it feels like he is um, incredibly um, so it feels like he's incredibly desperate to get the love and respect from Rogan because it appears like to me and many outsiders looking from the outside in that ever since the last Legion of Skanks appearance on the JRE, Rogan has made it very clear who he prefers from Legion of Skanks. And because there's only three of them, it's easy to see who he likes and who he doesn't like based on who he's invited back onto his show. And he's invited Dave Smith back onto his show as a solo guest. And he's also invited Big J Okus onto his show just recently with Irish Affair. But Luis J. Gomez hasn't stepped foot, hasn't stepped foot back in that flipping Austin compound ever since the last appearance. And people are speculating. We don't really know why it is what it is, but it's clear that Joe doesn't like Luis J. Gomez much. And my opinion is Luis J. Gomez is trying really hard to flip in, you know, clout chase and get on flipping, you know, uh, get on Rogan's radar by essentially doing good by Brendan. And he maybe hopes in the back of his mind, maybe if he pulls in a decent episode where he has Rogue, where he has Brendan laughing at himself, he has people in the audience, you know, coming around to him and thinking he's a good guy, and maybe doing the whole Whitney Cummings at Skankfest thing there, where maybe he looks like he doesn't match or blend with their crowd, but actually they love him, sort of thing, which I think won't happen because Brendan's a lost cause, a lost case, a lost cause, and he's too thin skin and clearly doesn't necessarily understand and comedy like like they do the way they think he does so i think it will end in a tragedy but i get the feeling that Luis j gomez is really desperate he's super frantic he's seeing what's happening over there in austin he wants to get on the mothership he wants to be around there and be connected and be accepted but for whatever reason rogan does not like him and it's very personal it could be because he doesn't think he's funny maybe because we already see what Rogan said about how he finds it hard, you know, how it's difficult sometimes if you like somebody, but you don't find them funny. So it could be that he's a comedy purist and Rogan just doesn't like Luis J. Gomez's brand of stand-up. But I've got a feeling it's actually do it's actually a personal thing. But it's funny that Rogan said, oh, he's honest and likes to be straight up with people. But Luis J. Gomez clearly doesn't know why Rogan doesn't like him. Hence why he's trying to do this whole Brendan angle. So this is them trying to explain why they think the whole Brendan thing will work and trying to maybe just suck up to them. It's basically suck up to Brian, Brendan and Brian. It's really, really bizarre to be fair. And it doesn't make any sense. It's kind of desperate and kind of lame. But hey, these are stand-up comedians at the end of the day. Can we talk real quick about... Uh, so do you guys... I, Jay, I know you're doing Fighter and the Kid next week. Yeah. When you're in LA. And I put out yes, a thing. I, I was like, would people want to see a Legion of Skanks Fighter and the Kid crossover? Mm-hmm. Because um, I spoke to Callan, then ended up just randomly speaking to Brendan Schaub, and uh, I put out. Um, he reached out to me about something. Oh, nice. Yeah, and he just uh, he wants whatever he wants to pick my brain about something, and then because um, I guess Bert was like, "Yeah, dude, you should link up with this guy." Like, you know, he doesn't hate you because yeah, I guess Brendan Schaub thought that I hated him. Um, and I do. No, I don't. I don't hate him, obviously. I don't, but you know, I don't know the guy. I, you know, I had never had anything really against the guy, but I put it out there because I talked to Callan and Shaw, but I was like, look, we should do a fucking podcast and, you know, just do Legion of Skanks, Fighter and the Kid, bust each other's balls. You know, I, I would, without a doubt, you know, we'd fucking. I think we could have a funny show and fuck around and make it an enjoyable podcast. You know what I'm saying? Even though I think our fan base doesn't necessarily fucking love him. I think our fan base is very open-minded. Similarly to how, when we brought Whitney on, she just I came in a thousand and fucked times. around. There, there, these people are, everyone's 
is a character <clears throat> in a show in some weird way to them. Do you know what I mean? I don't think anyone has any personal issue with Brendan Shaw. Why well, would you know what I mean? Well, I think I mean, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not saying nobody does. I'm just saying like I don't know, like. So what are you saying then? If you don't say nobody does, what are you saying? Say something. Stand on it. Come on, come on. Don't be scared. Rogan's not in the room. I don't know him well enough to have like sort of personal issues. All I know is I put this nice. out there and I've gotten a, de- it's not even a decent amount of pushback. I think, like I said, it's not even our audience. His really? audience, his audience is like, oh, dude, the fucking Legion of Skanks are going to just fucking cuck out like they did it with Callan and they're going to fucking be nice to the guy and fucking, uh, Lewis is just trying to do this to get back in with Joe Rogan. And I am. Um, but all these <laughs> like shots. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe, if you hear this, just know. That we're cool now. Now, uh, yeah, I just. Uh, I'm curious, right? What's wrong with these stand ups? Why are they so. Why are they such pussies? Like, it's not that big of a deal, really. Like, the only bigger. The only reason why people make this a big deal, from what I can understand, is that for the longest time, Lewis J. Gomez has been always kind of sniping, you know, doing little, saying little things to kind of carry the favor of the homeless cats and stuff. Taking the piss out of Brendan, taking the piss out of Brian, taking the piss out of Chris and the whole LA comedy scene. And it's them, to be honest, who've kind of made it us be them. They're the ones who've kind of made it us be them. Nobody else. Nobody else. So when you then see them, you know, trying to flip in, um, get these guys back on their side again, it just seems a bit weird. Like, weren't you just the other day going on as if, like, New York are the only ones who has all the real comics and the guys over there are just jokes. They're just influencers. They're marketing. Guys. Like you, you throw out all these weird you know, narratives at Brendan would say and you make it seem as if it's like us v them. And then when the fans kind of buy into it and then kind of call you out for your hypocrisy, you then start crying and complaining about it. Also, two of your friends, Dave Smith and Big Jacobson, are clearly in Joe Rogan's good books but you're not. Why not just ask them to ask Joe what his issue with you is? But guess what? He won't do that. They're all pussies. Joe Rogan's too scary and they're too intimidated by him. They don't want to fuck up their links. So he would never ask them because he knows how important Joe's been to their career. So he kind of, you know, doesn't want to ask and they would never ask Joe on behalf of him because they know it could fuck up their relationship with Joe also. So they just protect their relationships individually and they just all pretend like they don't know what's going on. Why don't you ask the guy himself so they don't have to do this nonsense trying to flip in, you know, get flipping Brendan on board to kind of be their friend so that they can get back into the favor of Joe again. It's so weird. All a bit strange. It's so bizarre. And also, why does it matter now that one guy in the scene doesn't like you? It's only Joe Rogan. You guys kept telling us that, oh, Netflix doesn't matter. You can put your specials up on YouTube podcasting is the best the comedy store's never been better comedy industry's never been better murderers beasts you know only 1000 of you guys why should it matter that one guy doesn't like you so what he doesn't like you it is what it is keep it moving sucking up brendan isn't gonna flip and revive that relationship if anything it's gonna make it worse Am, are we am i supposed to automatically fucking just hate a dude and be shitty to a dude be you were shitty to him your entire time that you're doing real last what's that raps he does right real last podcast the legion of skanks there's there's probably a compilation someone could put together of the times that louis J. gomez has taken unprovoked shots at brendan like why is he trying to inv- why is he trying to make it seem like people are inventing this this whole narrative that he's been leaning into the meme and sniping at Brendan. He's been doing it himself without any encouragement. Unprovoked. It is what it is. Isn't that more fucking cucking out? Just me, me, you know, have there's a, uh, his, if I wanted to fucking pander to this, his subreddit, I could just take shots at Brendan Shaw every fucking chance I could get. Wait, you I'm know. confused on what you're saying. What do you mean? Yeah, I'm a little bit lost too. His I'm subreddit wants you're, to say, you're saying his, you're saying his people <laughs> don't. I love because Dave talks a lot, but I love whenever Rogan's names comes up or those kind of guys. He knows how to protect his links. Dave Smith knows where his butter's bread is, mate. 
think it's lame. His fans think it's lame for his us fans to think it's it. lame for us to bring him onto our podcast unless we bring him onto our podcast to specifically try to fist fight him or ruin his life. No, no, no. It's just lame because you took shots at him. You made him seem like he was unfunny. You didn't understand how he got there. All these kind of jibes that you threw out there. Then to suddenly turn around and start to try to be his friend again. That's some L.A. shit, actually. That's some L.A. shit. That's truly L.A. shit that they're doing now, to be honest. They take the piss out of L.A. guys, but that is some L.A. shit. Talk shit about somebody to their face or behind their back, sorry. And then use them for clicks and views after the fact. Well, let's why definitely his, not why do his them. fans want that? How is that his fans? Oh, I'm, I guess when I say his fans, I mean the people. I can consider them all the same thing. The people that are on the the fighter and the kids subreddit. The people that hate him. They're oh, hate okay. fans. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, yes, okay, that's okay, a good okay, way to put okay. it. The hate. They're like okay. hate fans. Like what? what you, they if they can if they click on the content, technically they're a part of that system. You're technically paying him if you watch his shit and you click on his shit. I, you know, I'm not even saying that that the that it would happen a fighter and the kid Legion of Skanks crossover, but if I if we brought well, somebody on shitty to him, yeah, I'm not does. bringing anybody on the show yeah. to be shit unless it was like it was set up. I would never shang. I would never shanghai somebody to be shitty. Yeah. I would. I would if if you're gonna have some have it out with somebody on the thing, and that's kind of like the idea. But like, yeah. to sideswipe. I remember that was funny. Like, first of all, I think we asked Brian Callen some pretty. Uh, he answered some pretty good questions on that lie detector test. Yeah. But like, again, we're not going to have him on to fuck him over. It's just like, right. yeah. why would anybody do the show ever? Yeah. It's well, like, yeah, it's just a shitty thing to do. I don't know. I'm not trying to like, if we're, if we're busting someone's balls, it's always with the spirit of like, this is funny. We're all going to laugh about it. It's I love how they're trying to re reinvent history and rewrite history. I can't bother to get up clips and stuff, but the amount of stuff that they've said indirectly and directly about those guys and now they're trying to like wreck on it all is legitimately hilarious what absolute losers these are all grown-ups who cares if rogan doesn't like you honestly it's disappointing it's sad of course he's a male oprah i get it but it is what it is just kind of chalk it up to the game and keep it moving if anything lewis J. Gomez will probably get further just stop talking about brendan completely and just focus on his stand-up Maybe that might get him into Rogan's good graces. He might be like, oh, you know what? You're undeniable. Even I don't like you because you, you, you hate my friend. I have to kind of have you on. But this kind of angling and this kind of, you know, weird shit he's doing is just a bit lame, to be fair. But again, no surprise. These stand-ups are not, I mean, they're not all there in, in the old noggin. It's not well, then, like we're going to get it's him. Also, they're like, uh, the, they're like, oh, you know, they're trying to clout chase by bringing them onto the show. It's like, oh, yes. Um, well, I don't know if it clout chase is like, I think it does probably more negative than positive. Uh, I'm like, trying to it, promote a special. <laughs> no, I know. I know you are, but I'm saying them bringing but, but them onto this show chase? specifically. But anytime you have somebody on a show, otherwise I would have literally fucking no name comedians nonstop. Yeah, like, and we do that as well. I, I, you know, obviously you want people to watch the show. I think people will be interested in watching the fighter and the kid on Legion of Skanks. I think it'd be, I think it'd be fun. Also, I think it, there could be some fun, interesting, tense moments because obviously we're going to bring up things like the subreddit. Obviously we're going to bring up things like fucking the shit with Andy Letterman. We, we could have a fun conversation about it though, I think, but it's not about, I would never bring somebody on to be like, well, dude, let me set this guy up to look like an absolute fucking fool. Basically like, I'm not bringing shit up, mate. I know my bread's buttered. I like that Rogan invites me onto his podcast to talk politics and he expects my, and he respects my opinion and likes my flipping comedy. I'm not bringing up shit. <laughs> well, that's happened on our show before. It could very well happen with literally anybody that comes on our show. If there's not the right vibe and whatever is said, sometimes shit gets heated, right? Um, but I, that's literally never been the am intent. I once if I don't bring up, am I a cuck if I don't bring up the Andy Letterman thing? Because I'm not. Dude, if you go on his podcast and you cuck out and you don't fucking smack Brendan Schaub directly in his face and okay. say this is this is for the fucking skanks, it's no big deal, dude. Well, Just fight him. Fucking put my wiener in a cage, dude, and have my girl start sucking cocks because <laughs> <laughs> you're a real fucking cuckarooski. <laughs> no, dude, obviously you're such, a cuck, not, dude. you're such a cuck for not coming hard at that trained fighter. <laughs> no, it's not even coming. Forget even a trained fighter. Like if it's not even no, a fighter, I know. Uh, you it's, know, it's, it's not about fighting. It's what's just about, the point? The thing is, I, don't, I, I don't, I don't, we don't, I have no issue with them. There are people I just, that like, I don't he, like that. I, if issue. I was on a podcast with them, I wouldn't go at them because like, what's, so. 
it, the, the most important thing for me isn't simply to get fucking drama kicked up and dust kicked up. I want to have a fun, interesting show. Um, the drama happens naturally. So here's the thing about podcasting, especially when you do it for 12, 15 hours a week, like a lot of us do, right? The drama will inherently happen. I know he's speaks like this anyway, but he sounds so frantic. He sounds so fucking frantic, so desperate. Like, it's just hilarious, man. These guys are legitimately hilarious. They're having like an existential crisis or, you know, Louis J is really, because he's realizing now that he might have fucked himself for taking, you know, those jibes and those snipes at Brendan back when Rogan was still his best friend. And now because Rogan, even though he probably doesn't rate Brendan's stand up and then probably not as close as they once were, he's still loyal. And maybe he met him one time, Lewis J at that kind of Legion of Skanks, you know, podcast thing. He didn't like his vibe and he was like, you know what, fuck this guy. He gave him a chance, he brought them all on together and he went to see what if he clicked and he just didn't like he just didn't like the cut of flipping Lewis J Gomez's jib. And for whatever reason he can't accept it and he's still trying to rescue it some way and hoping that Brendan could be the person to save him. That's the last person I'll be trying to bank on to get me back in Joe Rogan's good graces personally. But I also wouldn't do this. It's, you know, like, well, why would you do this? Like, you're putting way too much importance on one person, to be fair. Especially since they keep telling us that, you know, there is no gatekeepers anymore. People can't decide your future anymore. It's all in your hands. But here they are, like, acting as if flipping, you know, Rogan's a messiah. Like, relax. He just doesn't like you. It happens all the time. You will see an argument between me and Jay or Dave or a guest that comes on here. There'll be a fight at a comedy club or some chick will come at us online. And that's going to happen for us to try to make it happen, I think, is the fucking lamest shit in the world. And there are people that do that. And those are the cloud chasers. There are people if you're if you're just following this shit just to post about it and comment on it and you're just looking for that drama, that's chasing cloud. That's called cope. That's called cope. That's called moving the goalposts. <laughs> uh, he's, it's your fault you made this bed now lie in it mate you took swipes at the guy joe didn't like it he stood by his friend he thinks he doesn't like you that much it is what it is don't now start blaming other people <laughs> or pointing fingers and say you guys do it too it's like grow up like I go into that hoping up, I'm sure it is, but I go into that thing being like, "Hey, everything's like cool, right?" Like I don't want to, I, I don't want to sure come in like that. Yeah, no, I know they're, they're both like it got postponed last time I was there, and they were both like, you know, shit, man, sorry, it didn't work out. Like they're, it's yeah, I mean, it's I, I don't. It would think be it, manufactured. Not... It would be manufactured gripe. The... Also, Lewis J Gomez lacks a lot of self awareness because I don't watch a lot of his content, but I've watched enough of it to know that he does strike me as the kind of guy who a lot of people in the friendships group would like dislike do you know what i mean you know those kind of friends you have in friendship groups where this guy is a friend of that person but isn't a friend of the other person in the group like he seems to be he's one of those kind of characters where he'd have friends and people he doesn't like in the same friendship group but they have to all get along because they're all friends but you can't leave them alone together because they will get into an argument or some shit He's got, you know, he's not the most likable person anyway. So I'm surprised why he's surprised why someone like a Rogan wouldn't like him. The problem is, the reality is, like, I don't know uh, on a personal level if there's any kind of... Oh, and the funny thing is, would it be so funny also if this has nothing to do with Brendan? Maybe it's just Joe met him a couple of times, heard about him, and just said, nah, not for me, next. That will be even more hilarious. Joe doesn't even care. He hasn't even seen what he said about Brendan. And he just doesn't like him. <laughs> but his two friends are too scared to ask Rogan themselves because they've just got, you know, flipping invited into the inner circle. They don't want to fuck up their shit. And him being a good friend, he doesn't want to ask his friends to put their relationship with the male Oprah on the line either. So he's left here frantically trying to make up a plan to conjure up some sort of thing. Rogan, look at me, look at me. I'm a good guy, I'm a good guy. I had Brendan on. Look, look, look. Kind of like a, a thing at all. It's like it's more like we've definitely laughed at you know, we laughed at fucking <laughs> we kicked apology. him in while he was down. <laughs> we've laughed at things. <laughs> I mean people <laughs> But it's not a Oh yeah, true, Josie Masters. Yeah. Um Louis J. Gomez. Yeah, true, Josie good point 
he's made loads of jokes about Rogan's height. He always does. Him and flipping the the the, the, the masters of taking the piss out of Rogan's height. Him and uh, Brian Campbell from flipping um from Luke Thomas's show. They always do it. So it wouldn't surprise me if Rogan seen a couple of those clips and thought, get fucked. So this probably has nothing to do with Brendan. That's a funny thing. He's desperate to get Brendan on board, but this has nothing to do with Brendan. I love it. The direct thing with the person. You know what we should do? Here's the, I think the only way to make this work is if Brendan Schaub comes on our podcast, if we review Gringo Poppy in real time and tell him what's wrong with it. That's a fair fucking compromise for everybody involved. We're just going to ignore the first one? Look at Dave Smith. Just quiet. Kidding. We'll give him a <laughs> Got that out. <laughs> Dave Smith knows where his bread is buttered. Look how quiet he is. He's never this quiet. <laughs> and it, and it, it's funny. He goes, and we'll tell us wrong with Gringo Poppy. He goes, we're just going to ignore that first special. Okay. <laughs> that one's too far gone. Can't change that or fix that one. Oh, fuck, dude. Um, anyways, I don't give a fuck. Um, you know, Maybe it works out for them. Maybe it doesn't work out for them. It's kind of pathetic what they're trying to do anyway. It's beyond clout chasing. Um, it's it's spineless. Um, it's kind of giving cuck. Uh, it reeks of desperation. It's lame. It's corny. Not not in a 